Keith Essex is uh, a guy from Talkeetna, Alaska. Keith is, uh, in the mid-90s, decided to move to Girdwood. He bought a couple 207s, Cessna 207s, and uh, started a business. It was really after his experience being in Talkeetna, seeing the flight scene and the mountain climbers and people going to Talkeetna, wanting to get on planes. So he moved to Girdwood, tried to replicate the experience. Um, after about four or five years, uh, what he found is Alpine Air was not very successful. It was a company that was, wasn't losing money, but it wasn't really um, doing as well as he had hoped. There we go. And so he had a couple choices. He could shut it down, sell the planes, um, do something else with his life, maybe move to tel back to Telkeetna, or he could innovate. What he decided to do was to trade in his Cessnas for Robinson helicopters. Um, the first helicopters in Girdwood. Uh, he then decided to offer glacier trips, flight scene trips, um, mostly uh, to locations in Prince William Sound and the uh, Chugach Range. Um, in 2018, I am going to get this sooner or later. Uh, PT Capital invested, uh, we acquired Alpine Air. Um, we really bought into the company based on the fact that it was a summer tourist play. You know, much like the statistics 70 30, about let's say 70% of our revenue comes in in the months between April and August, 30% in the other months. But the business has got a great safety record. Great opportunity. People love to go to Girdwood in the summer. So we felt pretty strong about this. This statistic back here, 70-30, is what we get in Alaska. 70% of our tours come in the months between April <clears throat> and August, 30% in September through March. Makes it very difficult for businesses to make their ends meet during those months. Makes it difficult for us to keep pilots. Helicopter pilots are hard to find mechanics, makes it difficult on families. And so this statistic is a statistic that takes out all the cruise ship passengers, all of the people that take the ferry. These are just air passengers. In 2017, PT Capital acquired a company called K Hotels. K Hotels has 11 hotels in Iceland, um, eight in Reykjavik three outside of Reykjavik. <clears throat> and I was there in February of last year, uh, two and a half hours outside of Reykjavik in Beek. And in Beek, it's a cold, dark, windy place in February. I just pulled up in my rental car. Three busloads of tourists jumped out of, the, out of their buses, went to the bar, went to the restaurant, had dinner, and were just having the time of their lives. Occupancy that night was 100%. Occupancy for the next two months was 100%. This is one of our hotels, so I was very happy. Um, but what was amazing to me is in February, in the cold, dark place of Vik, Iceland, two and a half hours on a skinny road that just kind of is dangerous and icy, um, people were going all the way out to this destination to look at the Northern Lights. And you ask yourselves, what's different? Why are they succeeding, and why are we struggling? Ha. So we decided at PT Capital to play a little game here. We said, well, what if we did what Iceland did? What if we went 50-50? What if we had 50% of our tours in the summer months and 50% in the winter months? What that means for us is 450,000 more tours in Alaska in those winter months. It's a lot of tourists and it means 500 million more dollars in spend in Alaska in those months. And we said, well, how we got to these numbers is we just took the average length of stay, the average spend, extrapolated it out into a very complicated spreadsheet. Actually, no, these guys did it. They're very smart at that. Um, and so we came up with this number, and we said, well, this is an amazing opportunity, but..." But how can we do this? And why did Iceland, why were they successful? 
It's four factors. First is a volcanic eruption. So we've invested into a company that is uh, predicting volcanoes in Alaska, and they are, we expect one next year, which will disrupt flights. It's my attempt at humor, guys. This is a tough crowd. You guys are half asleep. Seriously. They had a volcanic eruption in 2010. Uh, it stopped all these flights going across Europe to North America, millions of people. Anyone remember this volcano? or something like that. Uh, it made Iceland on the map. Secondly, 2008, 2009, the Icelandic corona crashed. They blew up financially, which meant it was a cheap place to go. Super cheap. The third thing that happened is social media hit right around the same time. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all these apps started coming and people started posting, posting, posting. And the fourth thing that happened is Iceland Air had the forethought to have a free stopover. They allowed people who were going from Denver, Colorado to Frankfurt, Germany to stop in Iceland, spend a day, spend two days, spend four days, spend five days, no charge. Go for it. It's free. Part of your ticket. And these four factors caused Iceland to grow 23% per year from 2010 to 2018. Per year. And 28% per year in winter tourism. 28% per year for the last eight years. Just because of these four factors. So what can we do in Alaska? My company's probably going to fail. That predicts volcanoes. Uh, the Alaska dollar is not coming soon. So, social media and flight stopovers. We think this is how we can help make this happen. Social media, uh, Nat Geo's got a page that's got 34 million followers, 4.3 million people watched this video of some crazy guy from San Francisco paddleboarding on a glacial pond. He's still alive, I believe. Um, but, Iceland is an innovator in this space. Iceland, if you just go to their Instagram page, there are people posting. It's not very different than Alaska. The only difference is they're doing it in the winter. They're showing things in the winter. And it is an impressive place to go in the winter because they've built up the attractions, the restaurants, the hotels, the experiences, the bars, the food. It is, you'll see people waddling around like penguins in February, freezing their ass off and having a great time and paying for it. It's amazing. Iceland Air, this is their routes, okay? You can go from Anchorage to Reykjavik to anywhere in Europe. You go from anywhere in any of these cities, spend a couple days. Our thesis is that what we need to do is we need to induce, entice, beg, borrow, invest, or take a risk on creating a similar airline route between North American cities and Europe and have a free stopover. Allow people to get off the plane. Allow them to spend three or four days. Not a lot of people are gonna spend thousands of dollars to come here in December. They're just not gonna do it. But if they have to go to Asia for business and they have a flight between Delta, which is a direct flight, or do I take the Alaska Airlines plane or whatever the airline is, get a stopover, go ski and go see the Northern Lights and then go do my business. People will do that. They do it in Iceland. So our thesis, our rock, using Ross's analogy this morning, is we've got to work together to figure out what airline, what investors, what group is going to do this and help us get that 450,000 tourists to Alaska. That's it.